Tonight, a tornado outbreak across the south kills at least six. That same storm system pummeling the northeast right now. New video of the twisters touching down in Tennessee, tearing through backyards, setting off explosions as they took down power lines, homes and businesses leveled, rescue workers searching through the rubble. This woman says she was picked up by the tornado. I got hit over my head with some, but my eyes was closed as I was spinning. I was just so scared. Now 52 million on alert for more severe weather across the Northeast. Overseas, the new warning about the humanitarian crisis inside Gaza and the powerful holiday tribute from hostages recently released. What this father told us now that his children are home. Former President Trump's reversal, why he now says he will not testify at his civil trial tomorrow. Growing pressure on Harvard's president to resign after UPenn's leader was forced out over her school's handling of anti-Semitism. Thieves busted as police warn of a new gift card scam. How scammers steal the money off the cards before you buy them. Both of our $200 gift cards were just completely, completely drained what you need to know and the holiday spectacular that almost wasn't how the whole community came together to turn these lights back on. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. The scale of devastation in two Tennessee communities came into sharp focus today. After tornadoes ripped through last night, a toddler and his mom are among six people killed there. Dozens more were injured. There were 28 preliminary tornado reports Saturday across six states. This is one twister setting off an explosion when it tore through power lines. <gasps> that is fire. Oh, my gosh. From above, you can see house after house destroyed. That same weather system today moved into the mid-Atlantic and northeast, bringing more suspected tornadoes, driving rain, wind, and the threat of flooding. We'll get to all of that in a moment, but we begin with Marissa Parra in hard-hit Tennessee. Marissa? Cape Britt, Nesbitt Lane, where so much reporting has been done here today because of how serious the damage was. And I want to show you just one example behind me. This is someone's bedroom. You can see their dresser, their bed underneath ripped pieces of insulation, shards of wood, all exposed to the sky. And Kate, this isn't the only one. Shrouded in darkness, tornadoes twisted their way through Tennessee neighborhoods. Oh my God! sparking violent explosions. Oh, That's a tornado, because those are power lines. And taking down power lines with them. Oh my God. Philip Dixon taking this video as a twister approached and the night sky lit up. So I heard, I could hear, you know, like wind tunnel, something like the trains, and then, then the big explosion happened. And I just, I couldn't believe I saw that. The twisters spinning up as a line of severe storms swept through the Southeast Saturday night. And it's really, very a dangerous situation. Emergency officials say six people were killed, two of them young children. I think that might be a touchdown NATO. This twister, a powerful EF3 storm with winds of 150 miles an hour, hit Clarksville, Tennessee. And at the local post office, workers running for cover as an apparent tornado swept through the parking lot. Close the door. I hope nobody was in those houses. Daylight lays bare the destruction by night that left more than 60 people in the hospital. This mayor getting emotional, saying the response he saw was nothing short of heroic. I've never been so proud to be mayor as right now. People here bringing with them boxes, bags, and stories of survival, like this woman who was lifted into the air. I was trying to go in the closet when I got that alert. I just remember opening the closet door and just turning around. The wind just took me. And I just remember waking up on this side of my house. In Madison, another hard hit town just north of Nashville, Nesbitt Lane is the site of tragedy. A two year old and his mother killed when a neighbor's mobile home was thrown onto theirs, killing all three, leaving Felipe Domingo without a wife and son. <laughs> and as he tells us in Spanish, with big pain in his heart. Just down the street, Misty Roberts saw firefighters rescue her neighbor buried under her collapsed roof. My neighbor, she's in there and she's screaming. It was a faint help, like she was definitely buried under the roof and she was screaming, help, help. As first responders check rubble for anyone still trapped, homeowners check their houses looking for anything they can carry. 
and we have to rebuild. We're just yeah. in the process of rebuilding, you know, one step at a time. Back now with Marissa. It's so devastating. We're getting late word from the governor. Yeah, Governor Bill Lee just toured here within the hour, telling us that looking at all of this is heartbreaking. I mean, you can see downed power lines still in front of people's homes. There's still 35,000 people without power across the state. It's going to be a long road to recovery ahead. Kate? All right, Marissa Parra, thank you. All that dangerous weather down south, now a major threat pushing to the mid-Atlantic and northeast. More than 52 million people are under the threat of tornadoes, dangerous wind, rain, and flooding. George Solis is tracking that part of the story for us. Wild weather barreling along the east coast tonight is already wreaking havoc. In North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh, a suspected tornado blowing out power lines and damaging homes. The same system now has 52 million under flood alerts from D.C. to Maine. Cities in the Northeast bracing for intense rain and winds, causing traffic backups and travel delays in New York. It's going to start our work week on a very unsettled note. As much as six inches of rain expected in urban areas, also increasing the risk of dangerous and deadly flash flooding. We got a couple umbrellas with us, we, you know, packed with some rain jackets, got the proper shoe wear on, you know, just live it up in the city, rain or shine, you know what I mean? The storm system could also dump as much as 10 to 15 inches of snow across northern New York and Vermont. In Colorado, the snow from the system causing a Southwest Airlines flight to slide past the runway. There were no injuries, but the plane did have to be towed, leading to more delays. And tonight, parts of New England looking at two to three inches of additional rainfall. And George is with us now. George, when might we see the worst part of this rain and wind? Yeah, Kate, this is all forecasted to ramp up later this evening and into the overnight. Here in New York, emergency management officials have issued travel advisories for today and tomorrow. Kate? Okay, George, thank you. In Southern California, it's not the rain, but the wildfires. A wind-driven fire is burning in Ventura County, north of Los Angeles. Nearly 3,000 acres have burned so far, scorching hillsides and threatening homes. Some residents have had to evacuate. The fierce winds in the area are a major challenge for crews trying to get the fire under control. Now to the Israel-Hamas war and horrifying new details about the humanitarian crisis inside Gaza. We're also now hearing from former Israeli hostages about how they're keeping hope alive with so many still in captivity. Hallie Jackson reports from Tel Aviv. A father yelling for his son at this hospital in southern Gaza as the World Health Organization warns the health system is collapsing. Fewer than half of Gazan hospitals are even partially functioning, they say. This woman tells our team everybody has the flu, diarrhea, there's no medical treatment. In central Gaza, hundreds of people line up waiting for food. The Jordanian foreign minister with a warning. Israel has created an amount of hatred that will haunt this, this, this region, that will define generations for come. Israel's military says it's taken over this key square in Gaza City, an Israeli flag there now, and a menorah with strikes slamming the South. Secretary of State Tony Blinken today defending the U.S. decision to resist U.N. calls for an immediate ceasefire. That would simply perpetuate the problem. The Israelis say 20 hostages have been killed in Gaza. More than 100 are believed to be held there, kidnapped from places like Kafar Aza. Tonight, members of that kibbutz gathering up the coast for Hanukkah. Here, we meet Avahai Bradich, a familiar face to the many who watched his vigil in Tel Aviv in a chair with a sign, My family is in Gaza. Now, they're home. His wife and three children released two weeks ago in the hospital at first. Treatment for stomach infections, lice. The night's still dark for his four-year-old. He can't really fall asleep. He, he doesn't want to, you know. I, I guess he's really afraid, uh, you know, to fall asleep. What he told us the other night was that he really wishes for the other hostages to return. Obviously, you know, we all started crying. <laughs> Then, a surprise. His sons, drawn to the camera lights, calling their dad to dinner. A reminder on a holiday celebrating a miracle. Every day I'm reliving a miracle. Some still exist. And I think back to what their life two weeks ago must have been like, and it's just incredible they're here. But you see, you know, kids, life goes on. They just, you know, they show us how things should be, and I've learned throughout this journey you know, so many things and I think that well my main conclusion is you know the most important thing in life is life. <laughs>
So well said. Hallie joins us now from Tel Aviv. And Hallie, we have an update tonight on the possibility of negotiations over the release of more hostages. That's right, Kate, from the Qataris, with the foreign minister saying today they don't see the same willingness to negotiate as before, but making clear they will push ahead on the diplomatic front. Kate. Hallie Jackson for us. Thank you. Back here in the U.S., a surprise reversal tonight from former President Donald Trump. He will no longer testify in person at his civil fraud trial in New York tomorrow. Ali Rafa has details. Tonight, an 11th hour reversal. Former President Trump announcing on his social media platform that he will not go back on the witness stand Monday in the $250 million civil fraud lawsuit threatening his real estate empire. Mr. Trump defiant, saying, quote, I've already testified to everything and have nothing more to say, adding, I will not be testifying on Monday. The former president was slated to give the final word in his defense as his legal team's last witness of the 10-week trial that's nearing its end. Strategically, this is the right call by the defense. It may be that they never wanted him to come back and testify, but only today they were able to prevail upon their client to listen to his lawyer's advice. In a statement tonight, Mr. Trump's attorney saying, quote, there is no valid reason for President Trump to testify further in this case. I'm the first guy that ever got indicted whose poll numbers went up. A new Wall Street Journal poll showing Trump leading Biden by four percentage points in a hypothetical matchup, the lead outside the poll's margin of error. The former president firing a warning shot at his successor Saturday night during a speech in Manhattan. I only can say to Joe is be very careful what you wish for. He's opened up a Pandora's box that may never let our country be the same. That's a very bad thing. And Ali joins us now. Ali, with Trump not testifying in his civil trial tomorrow, is the trial almost over? Well, Kate, if the prosecution doesn't have a rebuttal, that likely means the end of the trial, with both sides making their closing pitches directly to the judge. Kate. Ali Rafa for us. Ali, thank you. An announcement from the White House today. President Biden has invited Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky to the White House. The leaders are expected to meet Tuesday amid the ongoing congressional debate over funding for Ukraine's war with Russia. A Democratic bill with billions in aid for Ukraine failed to clear the Senate because of disagreements over border security here in the U.S. Still ahead tonight, Ivy League backlash, the growing pressure on Harvard's president to resign after her controversial comments about anti-Semitism on campus. Also, police cracking down on gift card scammers, how thieves drain gift cards that you end up buying. We'll have what you need to know. There's new fallout tonight over those congressional hearings about anti-Semitism on college campuses. One university president has resigned, and now there's new pressure on the president of Harvard. Dana Griffin reports. Tonight, the pressure is growing on the presidents of the elite universities of Harvard and MIT to resign. This weekend, the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Liz McGill, stepping down after critics blasted her testimony before Congress about anti-Semitism on campus. Harvard's president, Claudine Gay, also being criticized for this response. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. Does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. That Congresswoman, Republican Elise Stefanik, tweeted after the resignation at UPenn, one down, two to go, referencing the leaders at Harvard and MIT. Harvard's president did later apologize, writing in part on X, let me be clear, calls for violence or genocide against the Jewish community or any religious or ethnic group are vile. They have no place at Harvard, and those who threaten our Jewish students will be held to account. But that hasn't quieted her critics, including the billionaire alumnus Bill Ackman, who is actively pushing for her resignation. Jonathan Greenblatt is CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. Is ADL calling for these leaders to resign? I think ADL is saying we want action. And if the presidents prepare clear and well-developed plans to their boards, demonstrate how they are prepared to take real, immediate steps, I think that might allay many of the concerns. Universities across the country have faced mounting criticism over their response to the war. Some Jewish and Muslim students say too little is being done to protect them. It's important for people to 
understand that we are all in it together and everyone is hurt and everyone feels, yeah, quite disturbed by, I mean, this um, situation. Dana Griffin, NBC News. Coming up, we've got a warning about gift card scams. This is the dramatic moment a suspected scammer got caught. How their schemes could ruin your holiday. For anyone buying gift cards this holiday season, they're so convenient, but scammers have found a way to steal the value of the card even before you buy it. And then when the recipient goes to use it, the balance is zero. Maggie Vespa explains how to make sure it doesn't happen to you. Call this an undercover look at capturing a modern day Grinch. Nope. Body cameras rolling, detectives in Sacramento tackle a suspected shoplifter. Nope. Later, allegedly finding this jaw-dropping loot, 5,000 stolen Apple and Target gift cards, part of an ongoing scam, they say, to tamper with retail gift cards and steal your money. A scam so pervasive, it's got authorities coast to coast sounding alarms. We wanted to give you guys the info so you don't fall victim to the scam as well. And across the country, victims learning their gifts are worthless. My gift card was wiped out of funds and it was declined. Both of our $200 gift cards were just completely, completely drained. The scam is complicated. Thieves not only have to steal the gift cards out of the store, they then have to sneak them back in, all the while zeroing in on these numbers and barcodes that tie the cards to your money. A perfect example in Pennsylvania, where police say surveillance cameras caught two men entering a supermarket. That's one of them in the green hat. Then, there in the top right, you can see them allegedly putting 75 gift cards back on store shelves. Detectives say the men now facing felony charges stole the gift cards, removed them from their packaging, copied that key info, then repackaged and restocked them. The goal? For unsuspecting customers to put money on the cards that the thieves could spend. You'll never know grabbing that gift card off of the rack and then purchasing it that it's been tampered with unless you inspect it and take a second look at it. Or try to use it, sadly. Or try to use it. It's correct. Tips to avoid falling victim? Examine gift cards before buying. If it looks tampered with, don't buy it. Buy cards kept behind the counter or even better, online. And finally, save your receipt so if the card is drained, you can make a case for getting your money back. A lot of folks in our nation are having a tough time putting food on the table and paying their bills. These people spoil Christmas and ruin it for everybody else. Maggie Vespa, NBC oh. News. When we come back, there is good news tonight, how a community came together to save this Christmas tradition. There's good news tonight about finding light during dark times and the community who helped one family continue a beloved holiday tradition. Just outside Atlanta, Georgia. Merry Christmas, how are y'all doing tonight? The spirit of Christmas is once again burning bright at the home of Gwen and Mike Gaddy. Their dazzling drive-through display. Oh, that was for so good. long. Yeah, well, long. We're so glad you're back. Bringing holiday joy to this community for 36 years. We actually start the first week in August. We try to add something every year. But this season's beloved tradition almost didn't happen. Over the summer, the barn where they stored their massive Christmas decoration collection burned down. Decades of memories gone. I wonder what the feelings were as you're standing there watching your barn burn up. It was hard. He looked at me and he said, I don't think we can do it. But within days, neighbors, friends, even total strangers started donating lumber, lights, and hundreds of boxes filled with new decorations. It was an, a continuous flow for about a week and a half of about 50 packages a day. I think Amazon thought, what is going on here? <laughs> it was amazing how the people that have been coming to our display for, for 35 years, they stepped up and they said, we want this display to continue. Get up, get along. It's, I'm sorry, I get emotional when I talk about it because it's just so humbling. I can hear, Gwen, I can hear the emotion in your voice. 
I feel blessed. I love the snowflakes. I'm so glad those were donated. Heather Trumpke, who's been visiting since she was a kid, started a gift registry for the Gaddies. I knew that I could help out. I'm just humbled to be a small part of the big story here. Merry Christmas. <laughs> now, thanks to the kindness of this community, half a million points of light and love are shining once again. It's just amazing. You don't realize how many wonderful people there are in this world. Merry Christmas. What do you think this says about the world? I don't know how many more years the good Lord has given me to be on this earth, but I'm gonna keep the Christmas decorations going until I die. The Gaddies say it takes them until at least February to pack everything up every year, and they're going to keep doing this as long as they can. That is NBC Nightly News for this Sunday. Stay right here for Sunday Night Football, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Dallas Cowboys tonight. I'm Kate Snow. For all of us here at NBC News, stay safe. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.